dear students today we will be discussing about performance parameters of wind turbines and turbine blade geometry so we will first discuss performance parameters of wind turbines which includes power coefficient lift coefficient drag coefficient tip speed ratio and solidity we will discuss one by one let us first consider power coefficient power coefficient is defined as the ratio of the power extracted by the rotor to the power available in the wind stream mathematically it can be expressed as cp which is nothing but power coefficient is equal to pe which is nothing but power extracted by the rotor divided by half rho a e infinity to the power of cube. So, this e infinity is nothing but free stream wind speed and a represents the swift frontal area of the machine and rho is nothing but the density of air. So, leaf coefficient of a blade of a wind turbine rotor is the ratio of the leaf force on the blade to the force of the free stream wind. So, for a stationary blade the leaf coefficient mathematically which is represented by C L is equal to F L divided by half rho A B u infinity square where F L is the leaf force which is acting always perpendicular to the direction of the incoming air flow. So, if air flow is flowing this way, so leaf force will work perpendicular to the air flow. This is the direction of the force F L and it arises due to the unequal pressure on both the surfaces of the blade. So, we will explain when we take up the elementary theory of wind turbine blade design and A B is projected area of the blade facing the wind and rho is the density of the air. So, drag coefficient of a blade of a wind rotor is the ratio of the drag force on the blade to the force of the free stream wind. So, for a stationary blade C D which is nothing but drag coefficient is expressed as C D is equal to F D divided by half of rho A B e infinity square where F D is drag force and this is parallel to the direction of the incoming air flow. If air flow is flowing this way then F D will also work in the same direction and this F D which is nothing but drag force arises due to the viscous friction forces at the surface of the blade as well as the unequal pressure on both sides of the blade and A B is the projected area of the blade facing wind and rho is the density of air. Now, there are two kinds of machines we can classify one is lift type other one is drag type. So, in case of lift device or lift wind turbine it employs the same principle that enables aeroplanes, kites and birds to fly. This blade is essentially an airfoil. So, when air flows past the blade a pressure difference between both the sides of the blades are created. Normally, lower side is having higher pressure compared to the upper side, which act as or which act to lift the blade surfaces. The lift power wind turbines have much higher rotational speeds than drag type and therefore, are well suited for electricity generation. But in case of drag device 
it produces high torque and that is how it is more suitable for pumping applications. Lift devices are more efficient and turn faster than wind speed. The power extracted from wind by a lift device to that of drag device is usually greater than 3 is to 1 for the same swift area. In case of drag device, the wind literally pushes the blades out of the way. The drag devices are less efficient and turn slower than wind, which is reverse in case of lift device. So, at high speeds, this drag devices spill wind instead of producing more energy. Thus, they do not benefit from high energy density available in wind. In general, this lift devices are mostly used for power generation applications and drag devices are mostly used for water lifting application because of high torque associated with it. We also need to know what is solidity, which is the ratio of blade area to the swept area. So, how much blade area is there and then we know the swept area once we know the diameter of the swept. So, mathematically it can be represented by gamma is equal to in numerator n into c in denominator it is pi into r. What is n? n is the number of blade and c is the mean chord of the blade. Now, let us look into the blade profile perspective. So, high solidity rotors use drag force and low solidity rotors use leaf force. The solidity of Savonius rotor is unity. So, this is one kind of vertical axis wind turbine and that of American multi blade rotor is typically 0 0.7. This is also one kind of vertical axis wind turbine. Usually, leap devices have solidity in the range of 0 0.01 to 0 0.1 and they have slender airfoil blades. Okay. So, one can visualize something like, so if we are talking about three bladed system, so this area is nothing but solid right and these are the voids. So, what we consider say if we consider area of a blade is A, so 3 A divided by the entire swept area may be pi r square. Okay. So, if we simplify then we can find out what could be the solidity of a particular wind turbine. Now, we need to learn tip speed ratio which is one of the very important parameters in characterizing a wind turbine which is defined as the ratio of the blade tip to the free stream wind speed. So, mathematically it can be represented by lambda which is equal to omega into r to e infinity. Okay. So, omega here is the angular velocity of the rotor and r is the tip radius okay. and e infinity is the free stream wind velocity. Right? So, for vertical machine or vertical axis wind turbine, the peripheral speed at the middle of the blade length is used in the numerator instead of the blade tip. So, this is the difference between tip speed ratio in case of vertical axis wind turbine when you compare with a horizontal axis wind turbine. Now, let us solve one quick problem. The problem goes something like at a wind speed of 11 meter per second at a wind speed of 12 meter per second for a rotor blade radius of 10 meter rotating at 1 rotation per second. So, we need to find the tip speed ratio. So, how to calculate? Solution goes something like this. So, f 
it is nothing but frequency is given as one rotation per second right we know omega is nothing but twice pi into f which will give us in radian per second so if f is 1 this omega will be twice pi so this twice pi radian per second this is the angular velocity right so then v is nothing but omega into r which is the value what is defined in the earlier slide which is nothing but we have blade tip speed so v is omega into r so omega is twice pi and r here is 10 meter okay 10 meter is given here so it will be 20 pi and this will be in meter per second right so once we know v then we can calculate what is lambda lambda is omega into r by u infinity okay so this omega into r is nothing but v and this value we know 20 pi and free stream wind velocity is 12 okay so from here you can find out it will be 5.23 is the value right this is the tip speed ratio so this way you can find out the tip speed ratio we can take one more example like a wind machine of 1.25 megawatt rated power at 10 meter per second rated wind speed has a rotor diameter of 64 meters and a rotational speed of 13 to 20 rpm. So, we need to find its tip speed ratio. So, how to find tip speed ratio? Already we know the expression omega is twice pi n by 60. So, this n is the rotational speed. rotational speed earlier we use frequency so that information was given to us now this time we have been given rpm that is revolution per minute that means rotational speed is in the range of 13 to 20 rpm then what we can calculate so our value varies from 13 to 20 so we will get a range so, our range will be something like 1.36 to 2.09 radian per second. Okay. So, what will be the range of rotor stiff speed? rotors tip speed which is nothing but v is equal to omega into r and r is known to us 1.36 to 2.09 and r is 64 meters diameter r will be 64 by so that is how we can calculate the V, so it is a range of 43.52 to 66.88, this will be in meter per second, this is the range of velocity which is rotor stiff speed. Okay. Now if we have to find out the range of tip speed ratio, I will write TSR which is nothing but lambda is equal to omega r by u infinity. So, this is v and u infinity. So, 43.52 divided by what is the velocity you have 10 
to 66.88 by 10. So, range will be 4.352 to 6.688. This is the range of TV speed ratio. So, this is the way we can solve this kind of problem. Sometimes frequency is given, then we can take the value of frequency. Already we know the expression for omega twice pi f. If n is given, this twice pi n by 60. So, this will give you in radian per second. So, once we know this omega, then we can find out the v rotor tip speed. So, once we know that, then straight away you can calculate what is tip speed ratio by using the equation omega r by free steam velocity. Right? Now, let us study the elementary airfoil theory. So, it is nothing but a streamlined body bounded principally by two flattened curves and whose length and width are very large compared to the thickness. So, it looks something like this. So, this is the leading edge and this part is the trailing edge and this is flat and this is a very sharp trailing edge and this part is the lower surface and this is the upper surface and if we connect the tip of the leading edge and the tip of the trailing edge then what we get is nothing but the chord line and if we connect the center of the airfoil then what we will get is nothing but the camber line and we will get the maximum thickness here we can find out at what distance from the leading is we can get the maximum thickness all the things can be find out. But most importantly this C L and C D are very very sensitive to this angle of attack. So, these informations are also very very important. So, we will be discussing one by one. So, the, it has thick round leading edge what we have discussed now and a thin trailing edge and maximum thickness occurs somewhere near the midpoint of the cord. The camber line, this is the camber line which is the backbone we can represent here as well. This is the camber line. So, this is the aerofoil where angle of attack is 0 here. So, this is the camber line, this is the mean camber line, this is the cord, this is the cord one and this is the camber line. This camber line is the backbone lying midway between the upper and lower surfaces. So, forces acting on the airfoil which is normal to the direction of the flow is considerably larger than the force resisting its motion. Right? So, cord is shown here this is the cord leading is trailing is this is the nomenclature of a airfoil. So, we need to know what is leading is what is trailing is leading edge is somewhat thick and this is very very thin and if we connect the center line of the leading edge and the trailing edge then what we get is a cord and if we consider the center of the airfoil and we connect it then what we will get is the camber line and as theory says so we will get the maximum thickness almost at the center of the airfoil right. So, this is the nomenclature we used and this kind of things are need to be known when we are studying any kind of airfoil which is applied in the aircraft as well as in turbo machines. The shape of the leading and trailing is are important parameters which governs the flow pattern and losses. This is one of the very important points to be noted. So, now if we have to study the nature of flow when the plate is inclined to its direction say for example, if fluid is flowing and then if you consider a section like this. So, this is the center 
this may be negative this is positive pressure this may be negative this is positive pressure negative positive negative positive. So, here we will have drag force will be parallel to direction then resultant force will be here and this is lift this is drag this is r and this is a flat plate. and this is free stream. So, when the plate is inclined to its direction of the motion, it will experience a resultant force r normal to its length and this force has drag component parallel to the flow and lift force perpendicular to the flow. And this lift force arises on account of positive and negative pressure prevailing on the upper and lower surfaces respectively. Okay. We can also plot the variation of C L and C D. So, it is something like if we draw it in scale 0 then minus 2 maybe here minus 4 we have 2 then 4. 6, 8, 10 and we will have 0 here minus 0.3 minus 2 minus 0.1 so maybe we will have 4 then 0 0.5, 0 0.6 0.7. So, if you start from 0 to be something like this and variation of C D will be something like this and variation of C L will be something like this. This is C D and you can say this is I angle of incidence. This is angle of incidence. Okay. As you go on increasing the angle of incidence, so initially it will increase the C L and C D, but after some time C L will decrease with increase in angle of incidence, but C D will intend to rise. So, this is C L or C D. Okay. So, one more observations we have. So, we can have maximum drag force which occurs when the plate is normal to the direction of the flow. So, this will be something like this. Okay. So, if plate is something like this and wind flow happens, so then maximum drag will occur. This is the maximum drag. Okay. Now, let us study more. To achieve the high lift to drag ratio, the leading edge is rounded and the blade section is tapered towards the thin trailing edge. And to increase the value of L by D further, the blade is slightly curved and curved cambered line. So, that we will study now. So, we will study three different cases, one for uncambered aerofoil with zero incidence then uncambered aerofoil with incidence and cambered aerofoil with incidence. Okay. So, we need to also learn this. So, here our aerofoil will be something like this. This is the aerofoil geometry. Okay. This is the leading edge and we are going to trailing edge. Right? So, this is the camber line. Okay chord will be something like this is the chord line. right? So, this is the lower side as I said is pressure is high this is the positive pressure okay? and this is the upper part this is the suction side means negative pressure. So, this is the pressure side means positive pressure suction side is negative pressure. So, this 
convex side which is suction this is convex side is a suction side where centrifugal force on the fluid move them away from the surface because it will rotate. So, it will generate centrifugal force and the concave side this is the concave side the pressure side this is also known as pressure side the centrifugal force presses the fluid harder and because of that we are having positive pressure. So, let us discuss the uncambered aerofoil with 0 incidence. So, this will be something like this. So, this is the cord length, cord length and this is i is equal to 0 that means 0 incidence and this is leading edge and this is trailing edge. Okay. So, this is a case of uncambered aerofoil with 0 incidence. Then we will have a case of some incidence. Okay. So, this may be I. Okay. So, this is leading is and this is trailing is okay and this is the cord this is b uncambered aerofoil with incidence and third case you can see will make it cambered ok. So, this is something like this ok, you can bring down up to this point ok. So, this is your I incidence and we made it cambered this is not a symmetrical profile. So, we have made it cambered. So, this is the camber line and this is the cord line or cord length ok and this case we can call is cambered aerofoil with incidence ok and this can be also like this like you have camber ok and this is camber line camber line ok. So, here what we have shown this is the static pressure distribution around the camber aerofoil blade right fine. So, now the resultant force which is uh, acting upward that means, the resultant upward force on the blade is the result of the cumulative effect of the positive static pressure on the pressure side and the negative pressure on the suction side this is very very important point like no how to make suppose if we have to start flying the aircraft then what you need to do we need to provide slight camber because we have large area ok and that leaf force how we are generating is the positive and negative side pressure difference ok. So, lower side always positive and that has to be more than the suction side. So, that result in upward force on the blade is the result of the cumulative effect of the 
effective static pressure and the negative pressure which is present in the suction side. The total upward force acting on the aerofoil can be investigated by using the projected area multiplied by pressure difference between the two sides. As I said, this area is very, very important. For aircraft application, this area is very, very high okay, compared to suppose if you consider any turbo machines, say centrifugal blower, okay, so it blades, so it is very highly cambered, but area is very, very less. But here area is more in case of aircraft wings and the slight camberness is enough to provide the sufficient lift. Okay. So, aircraft wing large area available for lift force and small pressure difference is enough for this case. Of course, we need to have slightly cambered section. For turbo machines blades, projected area is very, very small and considerable difference of static pressure between the pressure and suction side is required. Okay? And that is how we have to make it very high cambered structure. Okay? So, that is the primary difference between aircraft wing and thermo machine blades. This coefficient of lift and drag are dependent on density velocity of the fluid and blade cord. So, what we can write L and D is a function of rho C and L. Okay? Rho is the density, then we will have velocity of the fluid and the blade cord. Okay? So, we can have the expression for lift coefficient which is nothing but L is equal to C. L is the lift force and C is the lift coefficient. C L multiplied by A into half of rho C square, C is the velocity, that is why this is velocity here. And drag force is equal to C D multiplied by A into half of rho C square. And the projected area per unit length of the blade is something like A is equal to L into 1. So, this is the projected area. Uh, per unit length. And as I said before, this lift and drag coefficients are functions of angle of attack. So, this is very, very important. If we are varying the angle of attack, then it influences the lift and drag coefficient. So, now let us discuss about uh, wind turbine operations. So, you can see this plot already we have explained what is cut in speed, what is rated speed and what is cut out speed. Okay? Now, let us learn more on it. So, this region like low speed region, this is 0 up to here is 0, even though there are some wind speed. So, this variation is something like wind speed is in the horizontal axis and power output is in the vertical axis. So, even though we have wind, but we cannot harvest the wind because of many region. Okay? That wind is not sufficient to provide the rotational effect to the wind turbine. Okay? So, this region is called low speed region and this region from this point to this point is the maximum power coefficient region. So, nature of the characteristics is close to that of maximum power available in the wind. So, maximum power available in the wind can be extracted in this region. So, here rotor speed is varied with wind speed so as to operate it as constant tip speed ratio. So, that is how it is uh, now maximally it is uh, operated and we can get a maximum CP value in this region. Then in this region, constant power region, what happens? It will operate at constant speed because turbine is regulated at constant speed. And this region 
CP is less than CP max because only CP max is possible in this region. Okay? And this region pitch control is attached to maintain the wind turbine speed. Okay? That means at constant speed we need to operate it and that is how sometimes we called the turbine as pitch regulated turbines. And after that we will have furling speed region which is cutout speed and above. So, beyond this we cannot operate the wind turbine because of mechanical problem associated with the wind turbines. So, these informations are very very important because at what speed we need to operate for maximization of energy recovery. So, this is very very important aspect of wind turbine operation. So, this figure tells about the relationship between wind speed and power output and also we can see all the regions together. So, we can summarize what we have discussed today. Primarily, we are trying to elaborate all the important performance parameters of wind turbines and blade geometries and also we have discussed the different operating conditions of wind turbines like cutting speed, rotary speed and cutout speed, how to operate the wind machine. So, hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.